que puedan tener acceso a otros mercados, no solamente le va a, poder, le va a brindar poder colocar eh, a mejor precio los, los productos, sino colocar más productos, porque la gente va a tener oportunidad de saber lo que se está produciendo en las galeras y en qué fecha esa producción puede estar disponible. A través de Contugal se establecerán plataformas digitales que permitirán a las asociaciones de pescadores, agricultores y artesanos promover sus productos en tiempo real, asegurando mejores mercados y precios. Fabricamos queso de hoja, el mejor queso de, de la región, lo hacemos aquí. Este negocio nosotros, lo, o sea, lo iniciaron mi padre antes de yo nacer y se han venido sustentando con eso. Hacemos una producción diaria de 100 libras, 150 más o menos. Nosotros recibimos pedido por vía de teléfono, WhatsApp, y lo distribuimos a las personas que vienen y a los negocios de la comunidad. La ruta hacia un turismo rural digital en las galeras llevará a esta región a un turismo más inclusivo y sostenible que cambiará las condiciones de vida de sus habitantes y de su entorno. Viajar es mi pasión. Me gusta vivir experiencias que me conecten con la naturaleza y mi cultura. Me han hablado de la ruta del café. ¡Allá vamos! En Chanchamayo encontrarás unas cataratas maravillosas. Luego de una caminata podrás sentir la conexión con la naturaleza y sus increíbles paisajes. También podrás conocer cómo se cosechan los frutos que produce esta zona. Y al final del día disfrutar de uno de los más exquisitos cafés del mundo. Las agricultoras y agricultores son personas muy acogedoras y te enseñan cómo se cultiva la tierra. Realizar esta actividad es una bonita experiencia y te ayuda a comprender la importancia de esta labor. Es realmente una super experiencia que de pasar quelques jours au fond de Madalena. On a rencontré des gens extraordinaires, on a été très bien accueillis y on a profité d'un lieu superbe. La pandemia golpeó mucho a estas personas y a raíz de esto buscaron nuevas formas de promocionar sus productos y servicios. Hoy, ellas y ellos usan las herramientas digitales y redes sociales para mejorar sus ingresos. Cuando las personas conocen todo lo que hay detrás del café, le dan un valor diferente, lo toman como algo espiritual. Y lo que hacemos en la Chacra de Dago es una agricultura espiritual y lo que tratamos de hacer es darle a las personas una experiencia espiritual. Este viaje fue increíble. Conocí lugares y paisajes hermosos. Compartí con las agricultoras y los agricultores. Disfruté de deliciosos platos, entre muchas otras experiencias maravillosas. Chanchamayo y su gente son lo máximo. De hecho, que voy a regresar. Mito Kamarama, Nico Onguti Napkorkoroye. Nakita Marakimarama, Ninga Tui Napkoroye, Nito Rujurimarama, Tia Chitui Tio Rokijoy. To Naoptenge Alfredo, Nakita Marakimarama, Echenge Echenge Miko Amarama Naunge, Pai Naptong Hurima Kamarama, Nico Onguti Tui Napuka. Costa Rica posee una riqueza biológica y cultural que permite el encuentro de gran biodiversidad de especies y manifestaciones culturales y se destaca por sus esfuerzos de conservación y protección del medio ambiente. Este emprendimiento inicia con una idea de acorde a nuestra enseñanza que nos dieron nuestros ancestros para que el turista conozca nuestra costumbre porque aquí está lo espeso de mi cultura. En las últimas décadas, el turismo ha sido un motor de la economía, ofreciendo oportunidades en las comunidades rurales, como es el caso de don Alfredo, dueño del centro ecocultural Toina Fueja, en la zona norte de Costa Rica. Si yo no tengo yuca, yo le compro a, a otra persona. Si yo no tengo pejiballe, se lo compramos a otra persona. La artesanía, 
Y todo lo que se vende aquí es producto de aquí mismo y es hecho por los indígenas. Son beneficiados más de 30 familias. Desde hace unos años, gracias a la ayuda de sus hijos, don Alfredo se posicionó en redes sociales, Facebook, Whatsapp, como una forma de promocionar su negocio. Se creó una página de Facebook con algunas de las fotos de acá, del lugar, algunos de los animales que tenemos por acá, también las actividades que hacemos. Nos gustaría más como capacitarnos, como que hubieran capacitaciones que nos ayudaran a saber, saber sobre páginas web, eh, sobre cómo utilizar las redes. La pandemia del COVID-19 ha mermado el emprendimiento de Don Alfredo, como a todos los negocios turísticos del país. El turismo rural intenta migrar a plataformas digitales para comercializar y potenciar sus oportunidades. Sin embargo, es necesario eliminar la brecha digital. Nuestro CESI, Centro Comunitario Inteligente, número 36, se ha enfocado mucho en el desarrollo de las destrezas digitales. La gente ha buscado cómo capacitarse. Hemos dado inglés, eh, inglés para el turismo y ese inglés para el turismo lo recibieron unas mujeres de la comunidad de Roseleste. Hace poco se grabó un grupo eh, por profesores del MISIT en marketing digital. Tomamos la, la decisión de que Copelesca brindara los servicios de infocomunicaciones, especialmente internet, con el fin en aquel momento de disminuir la brecha digital donde llevamos internet a más de 3.500 familias dedicadas a la agricultura, les transformó lógicamente la vida. El gobierno de Costa Rica ha priorizado la franja de desarrollo de la zona norte con el fin de atender a las poblaciones en condición de vulnerabilidad. Hoy la conectividad está relacionada con las posibilidades de hacer comercio de los pequeños productores locales, está directamente relacionada con la capacidad de educación, es una manera de promocionar el turismo de la zona y tanto el gobierno, la empresa privada, las organizaciones productivas como la comunidad demandan mejor productividad para su desarrollo. Para Costa Rica es clave continuar promoviendo el turismo rural comunitario y la digitalización comercial con el objetivo de eliminar las brechas digitales en la zona, generar nuevas oportunidades y mejorar la economía de las familias rurales. Colombia es un país con una gran riqueza natural y cultural, en el que varias comunidades rurales han encontrado un nuevo medio de vida que ha permitido aumentar sus ingresos y la generación de empleo, el turismo. Tal es el caso del corredor ecoturístico Darien Atrato, una iniciativa de producción sostenible liderada por familias afrocolombianas y campesinas que buscan compartir la gran biodiversidad de su territorio con propios y foráneos a través de visitas guiadas. Mi nombre es Roberto Rosa Rodríguez y estamos aquí porque queremos invitarlos que vengan a conocer este hermoso paraíso entre ciénagas, ríos, mares. Nos encontramos al norte del departamento de Chocó límite con Panamá, ofreciendo una bandeja de oportunidades para disfrutar. Esta iniciativa de ecoturismo la conformamos ocho comunidades, entre ellas tenemos la cabecera municipal que está el puerto y está Ticolé, Marriaga, Sumarado, El Rosto, Bocas del Atrato, Arena y Santuario, donde se encuentra el Museo Arqueológico que está cimentado sobre la primera ciudad en tierra firme como lo es Santa María la Antigua del Darien. El corredor ecoturístico Darien Atrato integra cuatro reservas naturales que albergan una gran biodiversidad. El Parque Nacional Natural Los Catíos, declarado por la UNESCO como Patrimonio Natural de la Humanidad. El Parque Arqueológico e Histórico Santa María de la Antigua del Darien. El Distrito Regional de Manejo Integrado Lago Azul, Los Manatíes y Los Manglares de Bocas del Atrato. Los servicios que ofrecen estas comunidades le permitirán disfrutar de una nueva e inolvidable experiencia con recorridos en canoa o en kayak en río y senderos acuáticos, avistamiento de aves, primates, manatíes y diferentes especies, salidas de pesca, presentación cultural y noche de tertulia, interpretación ambiental y cultural, alojamiento en cabaña, 
alimentación típica campesina y afrorribereña, aprovechando la formación del colectivo de comunicaciones con apoyo de la FAO. En agosto de 2019 comenzaron a hacer difusión de su oferta a través de redes sociales. Sin embargo, ante la llegada de la pandemia, incursionaron en el desarrollo de nuevos canales como la página web y la alianza con instituciones y organizaciones de promoción turística local. Hoy, gracias al uso de las plataformas digitales, han incrementado sus ingresos en un 25% aproximadamente. Encuentren su página web y cuentas en Facebook e Instagram como Ecoturismo Dariana Trato. Quiero invitarlos a que vengan a conocer y a darse el gusto de mirar algo diferente y probar lo que es estar en un territorio donde usted consigue selva, consigue lagos, consigue ríos, consigue playa, consigue aves, consigue cualquier cantidad de cosas hermosas para conocer y para disfrutar. Ecoturismo Dariana Trato. Aventúrese a explorar una de las regiones más biodiversas de Colombia, donde el majestuoso río Atrato se entremezcla con el Darien Chocuano. Digitalización, integración y ecoturismo, la nueva fórmula del desarrollo rural. Vive los colores, vive los paisajes. Vive la gastronomía. Vive la conectividad. Vive el turismo de convivencia. Vive la experiencia yunguilla. Universidad de la Selva Amazónica se encuentran los cantones de Tena, Archidona y Carlos Julio Arosemena en la provincia de Napo, en Ecuador. Estos centros poblados son el hogar de diversas organizaciones de productores, quienes sustentan su economía en el uso sostenible de los recursos naturales. El encanto de la oferta productiva de esta zona se basa en un sistema ancestral de producción agroforestal denominada chacra, que fomenta la conservación de la agrobiodiversidad de más de 100 especies de plantas. Sobre de la chacra también es donde que nosotros enseñamos a nuestros hijos, porque nuestros abuelos, nuestros ancestros nos han dado sus dones, han dado sus rituales, que donde que nosotros podemos consumir, donde que nosotros podemos enseñar a nuestros nietos, a nuestros hijos, para que este producto ya no se termine. El cacao, la vainilla, el jengibre y la guayusa son algunos de los productos agroalimentarios con valor agregado que las organizaciones Quichuas Cayari, Guiñac y Satsayaku ofrecen en el mercado interno e internacional a través de procesos de certificación agroecológica y de garantía local. La evolución de la dinámica de los modelos productivos y la demanda del mercado 
han impulsado a que estas comunidades adapten sus formatos de comercialización a plataformas digitales, ampliando el alcance de la oferta de sus productos y servicios a consumidores responsables, conscientes e interesados en el cuidado del planeta. Poder, claro, contar con el boom, claro, digital de las redes sociales, pero también poder llegar a contar con una, una página web propia que nos permita también comercializar con mayor alcance a diferentes partes, no solamente de, del país, sino del mundo también. Esta oferta de productos y servicios agroalimentarios se complementa con la promoción del turismo ecológico. Trata de impulsar lo que es conectividad en las zonas rurales y, y de promover emprendimientos diferentes para diversificar ingresos. El tema del turismo rural es un ejemplo que aquí en, en Napo se ha dado muy bien y que estamos trabajando para, para escalar. Los visitantes pueden conocer a través de los paisajes naturales y productivos los rasgos culturales de las familias quichuas y la relación de sus medios de vida con la conservación de la naturaleza, lo que ha generado mayores ingresos para las familias dinamizando estrategias innovadoras para garantizar y reconocer la calidad de su producción y así afrontar los retos de la reactivación económica con nuevos mecanismos financieros innovadores que facilitan la inversión y las alianzas público-privadas apoyadas por la cooperación internacional y el compromiso del gobierno nacional y local. Se ha creado este fondo fiduciario que lo que busca es financiar precisamente, movilizar fondos y financiar emprendimientos para dar continuidad a los logros que se han alcanzado en el proyecto de Napo Buen Vivir y dar continuidad a lo que son proyectos de bioeconomía, conservación, sostenibilidad en la provincia de Napo. Los productores y productoras de Napo han encontrado en la digitalización y la innovación una forma de fortalecer sus capacidades de liderazgo y posicionamiento de su trabajo en el Ecuador y a nivel mundial, así como contar con insumos de incidencia política para el acceso a incentivos, para el mejoramiento de las cadenas de valor y la diversificación de sus productos y servicios. Déjate seducir por el verde esmeralda de sus pasturas y las aguas multicolor. Descubre cerros y llanuras con la huella del caballo fil de las faenas vespertinas. Disfruta sonidos y sabores de ambrosía, mitos y leyendas que se entretejen en paisajes inigualables. Esta es la ruta del embrujo llanero. Bienvenidos al Meta. Donde encontrarás música, folclor, flora, fauna, una gran biodiversidad, pero también su gente amable, su gente amorosa, con todos los productos de nuestra tierra llanera. El Meta me fascinó, me quedé aquí echando raíces, es un mar verde, eso es lo que más me gustó, la abundancia de agua, el suelo, el bosque, también que aquí en esta tierra se puede sembrar, producir durante todo el año. Conéctate con la naturaleza, sus maravillosos paisajes. Vive y siente la cultura llanera y disfruta al máximo de productos únicos que brotan de esta tierra. El Meta, despensa agrícola colombiana, labrada por familias devotas a su tierra, que se unen para impulsar el campo. Junto con la red de abastecimiento del Meta, donde somos alrededor de 25 asociaciones, 550 familias productoras de la región, tenemos canales de venta como lo son los mercados campesinos, como tenemos la red de abastecimiento que es nuestra plataforma digital para venta de productos a nivel nacional. Ya tenemos nuestro logo, nuestras redes sociales que es Facebook, Instagram, nuestra página web, nuestro empaque y etiquetado para nuestros productos. Y todo esto es muy importante porque estamos trabajando para tener una marca propia. Lo que buscamos es hacer el acercamiento con el turista para que conozcan de cerca nuestros procesos, para que se enamoren también del campo, de lo que hacemos con tanto amor y con esfuerzo. Las familias del Meta te esperan para compartir lo mejor de su tierra. Te invitamos a vivir experiencias únicas en la ruta del embrujo llanero, tierras fértiles, riqueza cultural, deporte extremo, gran biodiversidad y agroturismo. ¡Te esperamos!
La agricultura familiar produce más del 80% de los alimentos a nivel mundial. Además, representa más del 90% de las explotaciones agropecuarias y ocupa cerca del 75% de la superficie agrícola. En América Latina y el Caribe, la agricultura familiar agrupa al 81% de las explotaciones agrícolas y además reúne 17 millones de unidades productivas en las cuales trabajan 60 millones de personas. Sin embargo, la distribución de la tierra en la región se caracteriza por altos niveles de desigualdad, donde el 1% concentra el 50% de la superficie agrícola. A esto se suman las importantes brechas de acceso a servicios, mercados y recursos. Todo esto ocurre en un difícil y cambiante escenario global, pero donde los agricultores familiares de la región tienen un rol importante en la recuperación y la transformación de los sistemas agroalimentarios. Por esta razón, son un motor clave para erradicar el hambre y la pobreza, ya que son los encargados de impulsar el gran potencial económico de la producción agrícola, apícola, forestal, pesquera, ganadera y acuícola, permitiendo garantizar la seguridad alimentaria. También promueven la equidad, la inclusión, el arraigo de las mujeres y los hombres del campo a su territorio y mantienen el tejido social cohesionado. Para que siga siendo el motor del desarrollo rural, la agricultura familiar debe permanecer en la agenda de las políticas públicas con presupuesto y acciones concretas para fortalecerla. Por este motivo, es preciso invertir en innovación, bioseguridad e infraestructura, mejorando el acceso a las tecnologías, los mercados y los servicios financieros, con especial énfasis en las poblaciones más vulnerables. Y de igual forma, es necesario seguir fortaleciendo las capacidades de las organizaciones de cooperativas de la agricultura familiar, ya que es indispensable su participación en la toma de decisiones en marcos legislativos y la definición de planes nacionales regionales. Lanzado en 2019, el Diseño de las Naciones Unidas para la Agricultura Familiar es un marco de acción para avanzar en el fortalecimiento de la agricultura familiar y contribuir al cumplimiento de los 17 Objetivos de Desarrollo Sostenible. Además, constituye un espacio clave para movilizar acciones que fortalezcan y potencien el rol de la agricultura familiar y que permitan abordar los diversos desafíos que enfrenta el sector de manera rápida, coordinada, eficiente e integral. Bajo estos objetivos, la Organización de las Naciones Unidas para la Alimentación y la Agricultura, FAO, junto con el Fondo Internacional de Desarrollo Agrícola, FIDA, son las encargadas de impulsar la Agenda de Acciones del Diseño de las Naciones Unidas para la Agricultura Familiar. En el marco del Plan de Acción Global del Diseño de las Naciones Unidas para la Agricultura Familiar, la FAO ha estado apoyando los procesos participativos y consultas que reúnen a los gobiernos, parlamentos, instituciones académicas, sector privado y las organizaciones de agricultores y productores para la puesta en marcha de planes nacionales y regionales. Así, América Latina y el Caribe se ha convertido en un referente global. Cinco de los 11 planes nacionales están en nuestra región. Brasil, Perú, Costa Rica, República Dominicana y Panamá. Igualmente se ha concretado un plan subregional con el Sistema de Integración Centroamericana, SICA, y también se encuentra en fase de diseño el Plan para el Mercosur de la Agricultura Familiar. Siete países han aprobado leyes marco de agricultura familiar. Nueve cuentan con políticas de apoyo a este ámbito, y 12 han incorporado a los agricultores familiares en sus sistemas de compras públicas. Todo esto nos demuestra que vamos en la dirección correcta, pero aún falta más. El diseño de las Naciones Unidas de la Agricultura Familiar está impulsando la creación de un entorno político propicio para el fortalecimiento de la agricultura familiar, garantizando un compromiso político constante y recursos adecuados por parte de actores públicos y privados. El apoyo a los jóvenes para asegurar la sostenibilidad generacional, permitiendo que los jóvenes tengan acceso a la tierra y los mercados. 
la equidad de género en la agricultura familiar y el papel de liderazgo de las mujeres sin espacio, ampliando el acceso de las agriculturas a los recursos naturales, los bienes productivos, la información, las infraestructuras, los servicios financieros y los mercados. El fortalecimiento de las organizaciones de los agricultores familiares y su capacidad para generar conocimiento, representar a sus miembros y prestar servicios inclusivos en el continuo urbano rural. El mejoramiento de la inclusión socioeconómica, la resiliencia y el bienestar de los agricultores familiares y los hogares y comunidades rurales. La promoción de la sostenibilidad de la agricultura familiar para conseguir sistemas alimentarios resilientes al cambio climático y reforzar la multidimensionalidad de la agricultura familiar para lograr innovaciones sociales que contribuyan. Distinguished visitors, welcome to this opening ceremony of the Latin American and Caribbean meeting of the United Nations Decade for Family Farming. This is also the closing event of the second conference on family farming of expanded medical sur. This event today is an opportunity. It is good news as well. It's an opportunity because it provides us with a moment dedicated to family farming and family farmers in Latin America and the Caribbean thereby recognizing the role of this sector in transforming agri-food systems and the need to continue moving toward a differentiated public policy agenda that enables social and political city. Now, this event is taking place three years after the launching of the decade of family farming, which goes from 2019 to 2028 to Latin America and the Caribbean. This event was all public. This period has also been accompanied by a very strong participatory process involving a wide range of stakeholders with a very clear objective that is, the aim of identifying concrecies to support strengthening family farming as a means to achieve, achieve sustainable rural development. We would like to underscore the key role played by regional integration forums and mechanisms during this process, especially the Mercosur Specialized Meeting on Family Farming, REAF Mercosur. And the Central American Agricultural Council, which is part of the Central American Integration System. Also, along with this process, I would like to highlight the leading role played by family farming producer organizations. These, through their collective actions, provide support to thousands of farmers throughout the entire region and facilitate their access to the necessary policies and services to ensure that they are economically and socially empowered. Now, we recognize this diversity of actors, and as such, we have organized jointly this meeting. We would also like to acknowledge the contribution of the Chilean government through the Ministry of Agriculture and the National Institute for Agricultural Development, INDAP. Their support has been crucial for us to be able to organize this activity for Latin Recording in progress the at the regional office. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Mario Lubetkin, Assistant Director General, FAO Regional Representative for Latin America and the Caribbean, to uh, take the floor and provide us with his opening remarks. Ante todo, buenas tardes a todos y todas. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, joining us here today in this conference hall. I would like to greet as well the hundreds of individuals and friends who are joining us virtually throughout Latin America and the Caribbean because we are uh, broadcasting in English and Spanish. It is an honor for me to speak before you today and to be a part of this Latin American and Caribbean 
meeting of the United Nations Decade for Family Farming, as well as the closing meeting of the second conference on family farming of the expanded medical sword organization. Now, first of all, I would like to greet cheerfully the authorities who have come from Latin America and the Caribbean, those who are joining us here today, the Minister of Agriculture and Livestock of Costa Rica, the Minister of Agriculture, Food Security and Enterprise of Belize, the Minister of Rural Development and Lands of Bolivia, and the Minister of Agriculture Development of Panama. I would also like to greet Ms. Fernanda Maldonado, the presidency of Uruguay, REAF, and the representative as well of Bro Tempere, chair of CAC, SICA, and the joint minister of agriculture as well of Brazil, and the Argentinian representative of peasant and indigenous family farming organizations and others. Again, everyone else present here today, welcome to our home, to your home, because this is your home as well. It is an honor for FAO to, for the first facilities, for the first after the most challenging part of the pandemic and several years after, uh, during the after this pandemic it is an honor for us to be here to refer to the considerable contribution of family farming to the economic recovery of the region now it's also very valuable for me on a personal uh, level because this is the first official event that i have uh, spoke at after taking office in uh August 1st of, la of this year, taking office uh, here as the regional representative. And it's interesting for me specifically to be addressing this content and this uh, matter. Now, the fact that we are here today live in this conference hall and indirectly by way of streaming the 24 countries we have, we're joined here with ministers, vice ministers, a variety of different uh, regional bodies, SICA, REAF, representative of civil society, academia, representatives from the producer organizations. We have all made this event possible and your presence is a testament to the success of this event. There are more than 200 individuals who have registered to take part in this event and who will be participating in the various side events. And this is an example of a true testament to the importance of this topic and to the importance that the governments have attributed to this matter in, by way of this support. We should also recognize that this meeting is an opportunity, an exceptional opportunity to reach agreements that will facilitate dialogue and designing differentiated policies for family farming while underscoring its role in the transformation of agri-food systems. Now, there was a unanimous uh, approval, as mentioned earlier, of uh, family farming being the decade in 2018, then the fact that this was adopted at the highest level is uh, something that we must recognize and foster. Now, all of this, of course, bearing in mind that nothing has been easy over recent years. We know that poverty and hunger in our region are affected by a multiple of different factors, and there have been success, successive events such as in price inflation, the pandemic, the climate crisis, and others. And these have had a particularly negative impact on the lower income families and on farmers. This morning, 
Together with ECLAC authorities and the World Food Program, we presented a special report for the media of Latin America and the Caribbean, especially addresses how these facts have had an impact on food safety, inequality, and poverty in the region. Just from 2019 and 2021, hunger figures increased from more than 13 million people and uh, poverty forecasts of uh, 101 million po uh, poor and extreme poverty, 82 million by the end of the decade, uh, dramatic and alarming figures. To the previous uh, scenario is the impact of Ukraine conflict with the rise in the price of food and crops and that affects local economies and especially family farmers, producers and, and uh, farmers at all scales. But also every crisis is an opportunity for transformation and we must recognize the effort made by governments, the civil society and uh, farmer organizations of Latin America and the Caribbean who through contingency measures and re immediate responses that are also efficient have been able to address at least partially the impact of the global crisis. We greatly value the effort made by each one of you to, to take part and attend this event that began yesterday and is ending today. This shows the relevance of the political will in Latin America and the Caribbean, and that today, supported by the government of Chile, Mercosur, uh, CAC, and outstanding participants from the Caribbean show how through regional mechanisms that include the collective recommendations by the organization of farmers, young people and women in rural areas, we can transform current challenges into opportunities to achieve sustainable development in the region. At FAO, at, from here, from each one of our representations in Latin America and the Caribbean, we are convinced that Achieving these changes will only be possible through collaborative work that must be led by countries through their institutions and organizations in order to move ahead and position the priorities. That is why in the next week, we will be participating as co-organizers together with the government of Argentina that currently holds the pro-temporary chair of CELAC and together with ICA, meeting of CELAC meetings, ministers of agriculture of CELAC for, uh, to see the mechanisms for the exchange of experiences in order to move ahead in food safety and nutrition and provide technical means and recommendations for policies in order to address agriculture and food in the main axis of socioeconomic recovery. And this your family farming will be a key pillar, we believe. <clears throat> and to end, I would like to reiterate our thanks to the government of Chile for hosting and supporting us in these at these meetings and welcoming so many stakeholders from the rest of the region, committed everyone to solutions to achieve integral governance for sustainable uh, farming and development. On behalf of FAO, I confirm our disposition to continue working together with governments and all stakeholders present here, civil society and academia, with our technical capacities and operational capacities in order to further these initiatives to influence the ties of solidarity and integration. I reiterate, this is your home. The doors of the regional offices of FAO are always open and together we may and must transform our region through ensuring food, ensuring farming, sustainable farming, and achieving societies that are prosperous and inclusive. That we believe can be a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lubetkin, and I now give the floor to Dr. Esteban Valenzuela, Minister of Agriculture of Chile, our host country for this meeting. My dear authorities, I'd like to thank FAO and our INDAP. Not even the dictatorship was able to put an end to INDAP, a very relevant aspect. I thank the peasants 
and the country uh, sister countries and i will not give a lesson about anything because you have enriched us you have uh, served in the dialogues and the experience plurality of knowledge but simply i wanted to share the greetings bring to you the greetings of President Baric, who has asked me to extend an embrace to each one of you, which we will do during the cocktail. He sends you his warm greetings with great admiration. To contribute, we have sought these guidelines, inclusive agriculture, green and, and smart for food sovereignty. This is not an autarky. What we need is uh, an exchange, and not even to mention all the collaboration among countries. All of this provides safety. We want to recover our production and the contributions made by Canada, USA, and Peru is important from for wheat. And we need fruit, but if it were not the, for the mangoes from Bolivia, and the bananas from Ecuador and others, we would not have it. The same thing in Argentina with the meat industry and soybean. But we cannot be indolent. We have lost hectares of production. We have lost traditional crops. We do not do everything that we could with quinoa. We do not support everything that we could. The present sector, we have uh, debts with the bee industry, honeybee industry, and small scale uh, industry, and we must change all this. So that is the word of the president. We've worked with all stakeholders on a national plan for food safety. So the 10 essential things, the first support at critical moments, material support yes spirit yes but also material support we multiplied by five the farming loans in the and more than 90 million pesos given by the banco del estado and more than a hundred thousand two hundred and fifty million pesos something like 270 million unfortunately we seem to have lost the audio of the speaker now now back around 260 million dollars and as i was saying marcelo the director of fao the uh, increase in farming insurance there you have the decalogue so for chile second food uh, sovereignty and safety and also savings, logistic, supplementation, implementation of treaties that we have. So for Chile, we have applied this and in that plays an essential role there also with the cooperatives, AgroCop, Innova to strengthen the sector. Uh, food, uh, sovereignty and safety, a contingency plan, and also thanks to uh, peasant family farming. In Chile, it's they've never gone missing fruit and vegetable, fresh, because we have so many men and women that have been working for this. There is a plan and we must respect interculturality. We have a national plan to rescue and as the traditional seed industry asks for to exchange seeds and not leave them as a sort of commodity based on trade. Collaborative logistics, and every week we say to Chileans, which are the best season foods to help the culture of healthy food, safe food. And so there, food safety, the water drought, Someone says these are the seven plagues, but we are, these are also the seven years of a boom. And we will overcome this crisis. Agriculture, farming is resilient. I learned this from the Maya people. We are hard seeds, we are resilient, and we are prepared. Go ahead. 
A fourth item is sustainability. As we all know, this cannot be a mere adjective. It is a, a noun. It is substantive. And we thank you for the Chilean verb of uh, sort of niggling. We thank you for being so niggling because FAO, he is here, where is our dear director, and they've uh, forced us as uh, good school children to not waste food. And there's been work done in the wholesale markets uh, of composting with municipalities and the supermarkets to go to imperfect, what is done with the imperfect food. After 25 years waiting for agreements, we've reached agreements with the large scale farmers and the small ones, the fight by NGOs and the peasant world, the farming world to ban the seven most toxic pesticides, paraquat included. And in Chile, we've seen a transition until they sell off the stock, but we're receiving a more sustainable matrix. And likewise, we have supported uh, export grapes as well. Ecology, biofertilizers, the mixed matrix, technical assistance, the new soil act. Now, all of this will help everyone to have the good diagnosis of your soil and optimize the work. Peasant farming, everything that you have addressed, but another very relevant aspect, not just rhetoric in terms of support to farmers, but we have done with the undersecretary who is here, Jose Guajardo and all the services, we have empowered in all services by the Ministry of Agriculture that there be representatives, men and women of family, peasant farming and co-ops. Hooray for export fruit, hooray for the dynamic sector, but farming, agriculture is of all stakeholders and that has been underscored by this government. Six cross-cutting gender and rural youth so much to do we in chile we have a system for incentives and all ministerial programs have a focus women have said water land dignity and coaching and here i would like to congratulate wilson the gentleman over there with the with a beard because the national organization held a specific uh, contest for women, uh, women peasants they were expecting 700 million but it turned out to be more than 2000 so we need to go to these contests we must focus on the peasant world and or we have i too have learned from you from the different countries, what is being done with young, rural, young people, these new generations. Go ahead. Seven, we're coming to the end. Rural development. And here, Chile is very much in the red. The government of President Boric is making an effort uh, to reach major agreements for a tax reform. And that includes a chapter on territorial income or revenues for rurality to have resources, connectivity, education, systematic support, constant support, uh, never seen before. This year, we gave fertilizers to families together with a support by hectare for cereals, but we need this to be permanent. Major countries do not rhetoric with rurality, but they focus structural resources, convergence funds, and we must go to that. We're putting up value. The idea is that it is a shame that we do not have a farm worker bylaws. Years of democracy, but uh, peasant organizations have asked for it, and this government will push it through the law on farm workers when we must also work for decency in our, uh, the farm workers in neighboring countries. We was, I was talking about this to the minister of, from Bolivia, all the work done in relation to fruit. This is an extraordinary support in our country. And also housing, wood dwellings and supporting artisanal works, essential. 
and a climate change. You know this better than me. We've learned from the experience in many of your countries, Costa Rica, Colombia, what has been done, restoration of native forests, the Maya de Tonica Pan, which are good uh, examples of this to see what they do there, updating the climate change plans, a new uh, soil act. And we invite you to be part on March 2023. We're going to have a summit of agri food carbon neutral in our continent and the Americas. And everyone is invited, but also for livestock we must make greater efforts as been done historically by Uruguay with their pastures, also Colombia and the south of Chile as well. Let's share experiences. We have farming with a reduction of methane. This has been a challenge in Chile. And now today we are going to uh, pay attention to basin advice. Now we have seven regional governments. Finally, Chile has had elections there. It was the only Latin American country lagging behind, and these were elected a year and a half ago. So with each regional government, we have set up a basin council first phase. So we are going to talk to the basin council, to the NGOs, to the family farmers, to the rural uh, water, all of us together, we will take care of water. This is a key component with regard to the, the water management, the key component. And then finally, smart agriculture. We need to see more participation by research in the field. This government, President Borges' government, has committed to a very difficult target, which is to have 1% of the GDP earmarked for. It's been very to have resources from the uh, dynamic private sector. Unfortunately, it's difficult, has been difficult, and we know that R&D investments are minimal and it's very difficult. We must achieve that. And we are building consortiums as consortia, as regional governments with academia, with cooperatives, so that we can create in each region the agricultural dynamic district uh, involving networks of artisans and the National Chamber for optimizing irrigation and other areas. Technical outreach, technical, high level technical outreach activities. That's what we're working on. We are going to be uh, an industry of daily security, daily food security, making sure that the our daily bread is uh, well secured. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished minister. And again, thank you for uh, allowing your team and the in-depth team to uh, be here today and s support us. Now we will have the pleasure of hearing a brief presentations by the authorities and representatives of the organizations present here today. As a result, I would like to invite Jose Abelardo Mai to take the floor. He's the Minister of Agriculture, Food Security and Enterprises of Belize. Muy buenas tardes. Good afternoon. It is a pleasure to be in such a beautiful country such as Chile and in Santiago. In Belize, we speak four languages, English, Spanish, Spanglish, and uh, the Creole. But today I will be giving my presentation in English. Chair of this Latin America and Caribbean meeting, Mario Lubetkin, Assistant Director General 
regional representative for Latin America and the Caribbean. Members of Ahetibu, your excellencies, ministers, vice ministers, leaders of agriculture organizations, distinguished delegates of authorities and government representatives. Indeed, it is a beautiful day in Santiago, Chile. It is an honor for me to address you on today's Latin America and Caribbean meeting in the framework of the United Nations Decade for Family Farming. And for the invitation extended to me by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. As the UN Decade for Family Farming is being highlighted, it is very important for us to reflect on the role that family farming plays in developing more innovative, sustainable, inclusive, and resilient agri-food systems, particularly within the context of how it can transform our rural economies. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic tested our nation's resilience, causing market contractions as well as production distortions. In Belize, Jesus' case, our economy is dependent on the twin pillars of agriculture and tourism. Tourism and travel represent 50% of all foreign exchange earnings. But this sector, this sector took a major blow from the COVID-19 pandemic. However, Belize's agriculture sector, which is built on a strong foundation of family farming, stood its ground and fed our nation during a pandemic. If it was not for the resilience of our farmers, our economy would have contracted by much more than 14% in 2020. Against the backdrop of the pandemic, Belize elected a new government in 2020. And I was given the mandate to lead the Ministry of Agriculture, Food Security, and Enterprise. We were elected under a planned Belize policy, policy framework that targeted the modernization of Belize's agriculture sector, but maintained a focus on small scale agriculture fruit farms, backyard gardens, and even school gardens. Immediately after the election, we introduced a program management model, a model within the ministry, which we strengthened relationships with the productive sector and their respective associations. And we began to transform the sector to be more innovative, systematic, and prudent on safeguarding our nation's food sovereignty. Plan Belize's initiatives in agriculture, tourism, and other economic sectors contributed to a sharp rise in the GDP of 9.8% in 2021. This is against what the IMF had predicted. And for two quarters of this year, Belize 
had an impressive, an impressive 11% growth, growth rate, a clear indication that we are well on our way of surpassing the IMF's annual projection of 5.7%. A number of recent investments in the agriculture sector is expected to further strengthen Belize's productive capacity, both in small, medium, and commercial farm operations. These include the formalization of cattle exports to Mexico, along with new investments in UHT milk processing, a soybean meal processing plant, a soybean oil refinery, coconut water and coconut oil processing, processing of pineapple, soursop, and other non-tropical, non-traditional fruits, and a new state of art corn flour factory. The agriculture and food sector of Belize contributes over $300 million annually to economic output, represents 80% of our domestic exports, and directly employs over 20% of our workforce. Our plan to improve our family farming initiative for 2023 is to implement a registration process of our farmers' organizations, including associations and cooperatives and family farmers through the food security platform. We seek to further discuss the adoption of the draft contract farming public policy of which FAO has supported us in drafting. The public policy for school feeding and the public nutrition policy is being assessed to provide scientific data in order to present to our legislators. We seek to adapt programs with 20 to 30% of youth and women beneficiaries. With the creation of a network of young people and rural women with the ministries of youth and rural development. Strengthening the capacities of rural women in transformation and added value and sustainable development and risk management alliance with NGOs and to create a sustainable and resilient agriculture to climate change. Inclusive agri-food systems with a focus on the market and strengthening of capacities in financial and business education. While in we have been addressing the matters of increasing production and productivity, we must also place extra attention and prioritize the inclusion of women and youth in agriculture. Market research is also another area of strategic intervention particularly as Belize has the potential to produce more, more than it can consume. Thus, has immense potential to increase exports. In concluding, I thank the Food and Agriculture Organization for consistently supporting the efforts of my ministry in maintaining food security and supporting those who are most vulnerable. I request, I humbly request the continuation of the Mesoamerica Sin Hambre project to education, school meals, and family farming. The school garden concept and school feeding programs are growing and have taken root extending into the most rural areas of our country. The development of in-depth value chain analysis has set the stage for strategic production, planning, and incubator program is successfully supporting the growth of small and medium-sized agriculture businesses. During the last visit, our good friend, Dr. Crispin Moreira agreed to support 
Belize in developing a seed policy, supporting the new agriculture policy and strategy, the implementation of a digital village initiative at the Digital Extension Program. These programs are considered essential for our ministry to create the enabling environment for the continued growth of the agriculture sector. I am glad that the main result, the main results of this discussion, of this meeting, will be put into a joint declaration of the countries as a commitment to strengthen their actions under the framework of the seven pillars of the Global Action Plan of the United Nations Decade for Family Farming. From the people of Belize, we give you a heartfelt thank you for supporting us and helping us to improve the livelihoods of the most vulnerable in our countries. I end by saying, when we grow our own food, it is like we are printing our own money. When we grow our own food, it's like we are printing our own money. I thank you. Muchas gracias, señor ministro. Recibimos Thank you, ahora. Minister. Now we welcome Mr. Remy González, Bolivian Minister of Rural Development and Land. Bueno, tengan todos, todas muy buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everyone. My greetings to all ministers and authorities in person, and especially our brothers at FAO. And receive a greetings from our president. This Latin American and Caribbean meeting of the UN Decade for Family Farming is always for us a constant reflection. And that is why when we realize that family farming in Latin America and the Caribbean is a productive system that encompasses 81% of all production units in the region and that through almost 16.5 million hectares uh, providing 27 to 67% of the food. And so farmers are the only guarantor, especially the small scale one of food security in our countries. We have recently gone through a food crisis as a result of the world pandemic that produced close to 2.3 billion people have no access to sufficient food and more than 3 billion adults and children had no access to healthy diets, mainly on account of excessive costs, considering that food security has to do with the availability and access to food. And did nevertheless family farming in latin america and the caribbean to a great extent contained the situation keeping these figures as low as possible and during especially during the pandemic it was considered that approximately on a 
account of whose insecurity in around seven to eight million people die of hunger. And in the pandemic, pandemic more than 20 million uh, more deaths due to food, lack of food than are the pandemic as such. And this necessarily has led us to reflect, to think, or especially in our country, despite family planning is family farming, sorry, is essential for food systems. According to the FAO, it is the population most affected by poverty and vulnerability, respectively. Before this, our country has taken action based on what has always been discussed. I would like to put to you very quickly the issue of land. Our country, before the year 2000, the more than 6 million hectares that we have, almost 75% was in the hands of landowners, large scale landowners and businessmen. This has turned around today. Today, these uh, uh, large landholders and businessmen have uh, are less than 50%, and over 50% is in the hand of peasant farmers. Another 25% is in the hands of uh, small scale farmers, and the rest in the hands of the state in order to contain the we call them the non-available fiscal lands in order to have reservations, our rivers and basins to ensure the stability with our mother earth. In terms of what this implies in human resources, we have deployed a set of professionals with experience in order to continue training to continue supporting our farmers for, for them to improve the technical side of their production. We have seen that the lack of access to loans, to capital, in order to support productive initiatives, this has always been restricted by the interests of banks with regard to a particular loan getting bank loans with an interest rate of more than 20% for medium-sized farmers and the large size, 11.5% and even 6% interest, whereas for family farmers, 0.5% interest and these uh, our farmers can access these now and now are benefit from this. And all of this, thanks to the car president who has put up the resources, millions of dollars that today, maybe the world is not interested, but the president has made, uh, given us access to this 0.5 rate loans in order to acquire farming machinery or machinery that may help efforts to provide the means of production to be able to work in less time. This means that taxes have and uh, fees have been uh, raised for the import of these equipment, in addition to the 0.5% interest rate loans for small farmers. We would also like to say that the market for small farmers is guaranteed. The government through IMAPA, ENA, and other government organizations buys the entire production of these small-scale farmers so that they may continue to ensure production and that farmers get a revenue for their work and to ensure food security. We have also worked uh, with municipalities, with civil society organizations. Recently, we have approved a financing of more than $300 million to support uh, 
um, brothers who are unable to access loans for different reasons. And so the government helps them with 90, 90% of the fund and they put up 10%. And if they are an indigenous organization or a women's organization, 100% government support to ensure the food for their family and the and bring the surplus to market. We have more than 850,000 productive unions that are small farmers, uh, medium to large, only 13,000. And this shows clearly how the land is distributed and active participation by these small farmers has ensured that inflation in our country has not affected as we're seeing uh, at international level, the pandemic, we have uh, passed it thanks to the contribution by family farming and small farmers that have ensured food at accessible prices. And then with regard to the incidents that we are going through on account of the conflict in countries, in conflict known to everyone and that has affected the availability of fertilizers we are already prepared because the government in the first phase with the brother evo it was nationalization and now with our brother lucho we've moved on to the next stage industrialization and with regard to farming just in seeds, we do have some weaknesses, but the rest, all of the inputs are um, all produced in our country. We produce the inputs. We also have agrochemicals and in our country and our seeds. We still have some weaknesses because we think that in this area, in the last five to seven years, in the next five to seven years, we may ensure the production of seeds. And as to the fertilizers, we have produced our own fertilizer, uh, the nitrogen fertilizers and potash fertilizers. We also have phosphate, phosphate fertilizers, our own. And we're improving some aspects. We have an ammonium phosphate, ammonia phosphate, because we produce sufficient amounts of organic fertilizers. We have a strategic company that does this exclusively, and we produce the inputs because our government's view is that we cannot depend on any external input because we do not know what could happen. First of all, a pandemic, then a war, and, and this, uh, uh, we must have sovereignty of our farming production. And that is what we must ensure all inputs for farming and, and many sister countries that have technologies, but if especially our friends, our uh, brothers in Cuba who have shared with us their integral pest management plans, but we must ensure food security with our sovereignty. And that is why we are working on policies and far more important because we have participated in the family farming meeting and we are the one held in Santo Domingo and we will insist on working on the national uh, systems for farming research and consolidating and expanding the access of farmers to family farming, the markets for public procurement to ensure the economies of rural organizations. We will affect to consolidation of the regulatory frameworks and their effective implementation of programs for access to markets by persons that do family farming, including public procurement of organic products, access to financing and technical assistance for our production. All of this is a guideline for us and everything that has been analyzed, we are already doing it. And what we've not done yet, we will do soon. And that is why we are here once again, very happy to be part of this meeting. Well, this Latin American and Caribbean meeting of the UN Decade for Family Farming 2019-2028 must be a space for discussion, coordination, regional 
a connect connection to align public policies that will allow ensuring food security with sovereignty improve the values of use to satisfy the needs of life and coexisting with Mother Earth in with resilience and so achieve the sustainable development goals with a new outlook valuing family farming. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, señor ministro. Invito al señor Víctor. Minister, I would like to invite the Minister of Livestock and Agriculture of Costa Rica to take the floor, Mr. Carvajal, Mr. Victor Carvajal Borras. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. All of you here today, our dear friends of FAO and our colleagues from the region joining us here today and representatives from countries. Greetings from the minister. It's an honor for me to be here today to be speaking at the opening ceremony of the Latin American meeting on family. Now, I would say that, and I agree with some of the thoughts uh, expressed here before me, there are some countries that are very able to compete, and they're large countries, but those of us, the smaller countries are, are more competitive when we join forces with a variety of different smaller countries. Now, that's the case of Costa Rica. Our success has been to farming, in fact, and not family farming that is just based on subsistence, but or livelihoods, but on a larger scope uh, where we work with family farmers who whose main uh, stay comes from farming and we've been working closely with them in order to have a competitive system because today the market no longer calls for quality products the market is also requiring sustainable development sust rather sustainable production and we as uh, those of us uh, leading our ministries need to do so. And so what is uh, sustainable production? Well, that involves uh, profitability, environmental aspects. These are very important because the people need to generate resources to meet all their various needs. Now, given that, or in addition to that, the market is requiring that we produce with uh, uh, low chemical uh, load. So we also have to work towards that type of production. And that is where we need to organize all of our institutional arrangements, for example, by way of FAO, and FAO has been very helpful with regard to good practices, and all so that we may truly serve those of us who are requiring our services small farmers, family farmers. Now, obviously the difference, there's a difference with regard to the large producers who can have their own laboratory, they can be trained abroad, but small farmers, small family farmers call for services provided by public agencies. And that's where the challenge lies. We adapt our institutional arrangements to what the market and producers are requiring. Because if the producer does not meet market demands, be a problem and that's uh the, they will be displaced there will be this crowding out and it's it's financial in it, 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 we see that in the market as well if the producers are unable to meet market demands they will be crowded out someone will replace them so we have a window of opportunity here, a specific window of time that we need to take advantage of so that public policy policy can really have an impact to secure 
efficient, technified, sustainable producers so that we can ensure that many of the rural areas are more dynamic. Now, in many countries, the rural economies generally uh, rely on, uh, depend on how well people are doing. And that's very important. Now, we're always trying to figure out how we can add more added value at the small level and that in the end also contributes to reducing poverty and to closing the gap between rural realm and other realms and to do away with this myth that you cannot uh, have, have income in in the rural realm now this there's not our institutions are also challenged for example the just recently the president of costa rica mentioned that that uh, poverty will not be solved with a single piece of equipment, but we do know that technification is important and we have drones that are uh, gathering data so that we know how much fertilizer to use or the uh, uh, if we have a hectare affected by a, a plague how can we uh, or past how can we address this and if i apply this the fertilization today uh, rather than if i fumigate this field today i will be able to solve problems so in any event this type of technology is not just a challenge for the producers and the farmers but it's also also a challenge for the institutions. We need to make progress. We need to become more modern. Uh, and perhaps we're not all that accustomed to this. And this is, I'm speaking uh, from my own specific experience. We are doing our best to first transform and the institutional arrangements and make them more modern so that we can then get to the product. So it's, again, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? And as public agencies, we have a lot to uh, to do to change, to become more modern so that we can have a clear message and we can easily speak to the producers with a message that's easier to understand. And then we can work together and move forward together. Now. Family farming has been referred to as the engine of rural development. For example, this week, in fact, in, in Costa Rica, we are working on public policy for the agricultural sector. This has been underway for several years, but our government is just now working on sending uh, this draft to a public a consultation and so that all of the various institutions can be involved. We have more than 17 institutions in the agricultural and livestock sector. So the idea is to provide guidelines for these institutions so they can meet specific targets because it's always important to place importance on rural development, because if you are able to have an impact on these population groups and these individuals, you will be able to measure how successful your institution is. You, you shouldn't measure your success on the number of fora, number of training sessions held. It's really about how much of an impact we've been able to have on the lives of these individuals. And that's where we, have a very high moral obligation. And I come from a rural area in Costa Rica. I live in a border region as well. I've already always lived there. I grew up there. And I would like to make a difference there. And that's a commitment. And the success I have is something that I will enjoy even when I'm no longer with the ministry. And these commitments within the ministry dictate what we do. And this policy is also aimed at all of that. It's about how to secure that, how to make sure that public agencies will really meet market needs so that we can have an impact and contribute to the producers. And I think a lot of be discussed here as well, because I would assume that many of the other countries are facing the similar situations. And 
we have been addressing uh, fiscal uh, restraints and constraints, and one needs to be more creative to uh, make sure that uh, the highest uh, number of resources are earmarked for making a difference. So thank you to FAO for allowing us to be here to take part in these discussions. And I hope that this event is very fruitful for us, but also for so that we may have a positive impact on the producers. So thank you. Thank you for your remarks, distinguished minister. Allow me to now give the floor to Augusto Valderrama, the Minister of Agricultural Development of Panama. Good afternoon, distinguished Mario Lubetkin, Assistant Director General and FAO Regional Representative for Latin America and the Caribbean, distinguished Minister of Agriculture of Chile, distinguished ministers and vice ministers of agriculture and family farming and rural farming joining us here today distinguished representatives from FAO, our colleagues from family farming organizations from Latin America and the Caribbean present here today, the ambassador of Panama in Chile. It's a pleasure to see you, all of you today for us. Today is truly a day of great satisfaction and joy. We are very pleased to have been honored by the Chilean people uh, to have received us with a great deal of affection here and within FAO for an issue that is of such importance for our region. Greetings, warm greetings from the president of Panama and from the minister of agriculture. We are truly committed to family farming and agricultural development. Now, this Latin American and Caribbean meeting will provide us with an opportunity to share experiences among the various countries with regard to family farming within the framework of the United Nations Decade of Family Farming. This is an opportunity, or a very important moment an opportunity to refer to what we have done in our countries and to share our experiences. Now, the initial action was defining and adopting a legal framework that guarantees strengthening of the food production center, prioritizing primarily the development of the most vulnerable groups by way of family farming, while designing a state level policy that would guarantee that the agricultural livestock sector would be sustainable and uh, resilient for 20 years, and so that the producers would not be affected by uh, the prefer commercial preferences or political changing winds of any specific government. Solidarity is key, and these are key aspects for a better future. As a country, we have focused our attention on the nutritional needs using a variety of different programs that have been coordinated by different public agencies, all in order to secure the right to food, including the Ministry of Agricultural and Livestock Development, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Education, and the Ministry of Rural Development. Now, by way of the 2030 agenda, we have provided support to production for securing access to uh, safe uh, food with enough variety, quantity and quality. This has been part of a commitment by the government and uh, the participation of the government, civil uh, society and international organizations and unions. Now,
despite very critical situation facing uh, agri the agricultural sector, given biosecurity initiatives taken to ad address COVID-19, our sector did not stop producing at our farms and our family farmers did not stop either. These stakeholders provided markets to uh, provide food to our markets and our people during this significant crisis. Now, the agricultural sector during this crisis was resilient. And today, as a result, we should all be very proud that following the COVID-19 crisis, the agricultural and livestock sector and family farming have actually become a state level policy for all of our countries and represent an urgent program related to national sovereignty and security and policies. In keeping with the most recent figures, FAO believes that in Panama, despite the crisis, there was a 1.7 point drop, percent drop in poverty and hunger from 7.5 to 5.3, representing roughly 200,000 who left poverty behind. And this was thanks to support by organizations such as FAO and thanks to state level policies as well allowing the vulnerable sectors to receive significant report support by way of uh, resource transfers during the pandemic. We believe, distinguished Assistant Director, Director General of FAO, this is a very key moment in humanity. We can no longer continue to live on planet Earth with systems that are not equitable, where we have a great deal of social injustices and inequality, and where most of the vulnerable sectors are significantly affected by the COVID sector and the increase in food prices. We need global agreement in which the those countries with uh, more power, with more resources and more uh, reach to address climate change will actually recognize the fact that we need to have a new strategic partnership between the South and North countries. We cannot continue with uh, hunger, poverty and misery extreme poverty, the lack of integration, problems with culture, education, health in, among our people. We cannot live in that way. We cannot see our farmers as mere producers of food. We must see them as integral men and women that require of all facilities and commodities, technology offered by the world today. We have faith in organizations such as the FAO and the leadership of the Secretary General, Mr. Mario Lubetkin. I'm sure God will shine his way and that he will have the fortitude to bring about the changes we need. The time has come to act. There is no time to continue talking. We should not be here without feeling hunger. While there is a child dying of hunger, a woman who living in desolation and a man fighting, we are in debt with humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, for your message. I now would like to welcome Mrs. Fernanda Maldonado, representing the Director General of Protempore Secretariat, the Ministry of Livestock, Agriculture and Fisheries of Uruguay. Hola, buenas tardes. Buenas Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Señores ministros, señoras ministers, viceministros, viceministras, vice ministers, national authorities, representatives of the various countries gathered here today 
within the framework of the uh, REAF that we have been working on over the last two days of representatives of organizations of family farmers, indigenous farmers and artisanal farmers. First, major thanks to the government of Chile for welcoming us here uh, so affectionately. And I thank you for facilitating the holding of this conference. Also, my gratitude to FAO for the support and the organization. The truth is that everything has turned out excellently. We felt very comfortable working here. So thank you very much. I would like to underscore something that in a way has already been done and which was in emphatically marked by all organizations and representatives of the various governments in the various work instances of the last two days, family, peasant, uh, and peasant is, uh, activities is fire, key to fight against poverty and the security of food system. Family farming plays a key role in social and cultural aspects. Also, of REAF as a space for coordination, exchange, as a space for dialogue at regional level, reaffirm the role and the relevance of space for dialogue and exchange at national level. Framework and with this basic, we must push everyone to implement the does the UN Decade for Family Farming. We must be proactive in the implementation of this decade. So that the seven pillars that mark us according to the reality of each country, what we call the territorialization of public policy to be efficient and actively listening to peasant organizations. There, we will need and appeal to the inter various international agencies to collaborate. We have received a major blow. We've all seen the consequences of the pandemic, especially women and children. We also suffer the consequences of climate change. But in turn, this has allowed us to reaffirm the role and the relevance of family farming as a way of producing the food that we offer, the inclusive way that we must continue to work on public policies that will contribute to mitigate the consequences of continue to work on all those aspects that have been addressed over the last few years and in this regional uh, ambit for dialogue. And that is why the relevance of the UN Decade for Family Farming, that is why the invitation is to continue to mean also implies a major opportunity. The world consumers are paying attention to the products they are consuming. The ways that they're produced is paying greater attention to the processes involved. And so the invitation here is to reflect on this. We have been doing it in the last two days of work. We must think how family farming will position itself with regard to this opportunity, which will be the strategy an opportunity to change our narrative and telling the story behind each product of being able to show the faces and how we work, showing each process of recording each process. And in turn, this may turn into the main strength in the sphere of negotiations that we must continue to keep up to deal with the themes that have brought us together here today highlighting the role of rural women working on making visible the transformative contribution by rural women having specific policies for rural women and young people. And in this context, to end the coordination, the technical exchange, all these are essential for an implementation of the decade for family farming. A space for dialogue and exchange is essential for progress 
and who may have an efficient implementation of public policy, not just collaborating in the design, but also collaborating in the implementation. REAF is prepared to contribute to, uh, with other countries, with other mechanisms for integration, regional integration, for South-South uh, collaboration with SICA and CELAC. We are at your service. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director, for your words. And now I would like to introduce Miriam Estela Guzman de Tejada, Pro Tempore Presidency of CACSICA, Vice Minister of Rural Development, Ministry of Agriculture of the Dominican Republic. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon, friends, ministerial representatives of bilateral international organizations, representatives of our family farmers in the whole of Latin America. It could be said that if I said I agree with everything said here, that would be the end of my words. But I would like to go a little further. Some specific aspects that I believe should be highlighted to go a little beyond the discourse that we could read from home uh, in, any, in any of our journals. And let us think a little about the responsibilities of each one here sitting on a chair representing three so very relevant sectors for something that humanity has constantly struggled. Peace. Here are the international agencies, local governments, farmers, and the technical people who carry out joint actions. And if we've all come here to listen to these discourses and once again repeat things, well, I already knew what's going to be said even before I came to Chile. But if I take on the responsibility of having been sitting on a chair in Chile, then I cannot return to the Dominican Republic in the same way. Uh, people must return with a higher level of responsibility, questioning what they should be doing from where each one sits and how we take on that responsibility so that this beautiful opportunity that gives us life so that each one may say that we are truly working in a sector that is vital, food, food security, sovereignty that we, many of us seek, but we never achieve because we're always going to def depend on another because God has meant us to be collaborators. Because to have sovereignty and say that, well, I have a plate on the table and this will not depend on anyone, that will be difficult. But to ensure that the plate will be on the table with everyone's collaboration, that is sufficient to feed the world and that no one should go hungry. And so if we have that responsibility, we must be clear in that family farming to be sustainable, as Costa Rica was saying, must be profitable. To be profitable, it must be associated. And to be associate, it must be uh, researched and financed. It sounds simple, but it is a long task. The farmers here, I say, begins with you. It does not begin with the government. It begins directly 
with those who have the gift, the responsibility, so that by little we may go creating that atmosphere where technicians, entities take on the responsibility and that they, that the farmers have taken on for themselves to feed the world. But if they do it with their heart, must cannot forget their minds and their pockets. And so this family farming must occur within a territorial context that grows and where everyone has the same opportunities. And today we are no longer uh, at the point where we can control migra migration. We must turn it around. Many of these people who have migrated, they must be invited to return to their rural areas. And they will return when they have Wi-Fi, when they have a tower that helps them to communicate and that say that they are able to send a beautiful picture, such as the one we're seeing here. They have it in that. He will return when highways of 10, 15 kilometers turn also into the possibilities of a, a rise to visit the beautiful landscapes in highways that can be traveled. Not, and not only in four by fours SUVs, but they have no four by fours. They often need to leave on the back of an animal, taking the animal away from the harvest, and also because but in a highway you can do just a few minutes. It takes a horse a long time. We must all think that that rural setting must necessarily change to have family farming to have a relay and for women not want to move and take their family to a better setting because they believe that there she's better off where she is and so we will be seeing what we must make the most of that is the human quality that is being little by little lost because of the setting this human quality that we necessarily need to put it up so that each human being values themselves, that the peasant knows that they're living in a paradise and that this can be a paradise if we who are at the level of public policy understand that so it should be, not for convenience, no, but for the convenience of those of us who have already moved to the cities and need peace to live there, because two days of strike end with 10 years of the industrial development. These reflections bring us to address the responsibilities that we all have with regard to public policy, the public policies that need to give way to regulations that prevent, that make sure it's not about the current administration's willingness or good intentions. For example, we have an excellent example. We have a minister of agriculture giving everything making everything possible for us to truly bring about uh, reality. If we do not have laws, if we do not make it mandatory for everyone to do what is required, we will see that everything that we have made possible will simply just disappear. And it will be for not because we know governments change sort of policies rather sort of political parties and the parties change the governments we also know that uh, civil servants uh, that are truly dedicated can also change and intention 
can change. So this is about world peace. I repeat, I'm not talking about something mundane and silly. I'm talking about that which is most important for human beings. You essential to eat, to live, but in order to live in peace, that's also a need. That's something we all need. And thankfully, we have all realized that during the pandemic, peace Trees dependent as they thought they were. We need to share. It's not just about having an individual shipment, but we need everything that the great earth is able to do so. So the advantage of this opportunity and let's one by one do good on this commitment, this promise. What can each individual do to make sure that this is a reality in all of our countries? We are infinitely appreciative of FAO's contribution Thanks to that. Technically, we have a regional, sub-regional program that essentially tells us where we should go. And the speeches have all right here have all relatively uh, adhered to the same uh, profile. Uh, all of us speaking here today Valderrama and others have uh, a very similar reality experience so that we can easily reach agreements and so that we can so that research is not so expensive. I know there's a lot out there that we can actually share. We want to ensure that the training our producers need is actually available to them in order for this to be, in order for our family farmers to have access to markets that they so desperately need, that's what we're here for. We, the governments, in our own little niche, in our own little corner, will contribute so that family farmers will have the funds and will be able to meet external needs and so that our rural worlds will secure well-being, the well-being they need. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your message with us, Vice Minister. Now, finally, I would like to give the floor to Maria Isabel Carrillo, who has a message for you on behalf of the Peasant and Indigenous Family Farming Organizations. Speaking in an indigenous language. Greetings on behalf of the Partnership for Food Security of Latin America and the Caribbean. Distinguished ministers and others present here today, you have a great deal of responsibility and plethora of tasks and commitments and work to do with regard to indigenous and peasant farmers. Thank you for that. Now, the network of this partnership of Latin America and the Caribbean consists of Maela City Clock and other organizations, the World Forum for Fishermen and others who are actually not here today, but still following us online. Now that we are here today, 
four years after the launching of the decade, we are here to appeal to the governments to reinforce the work in actions and investments as a right of producers. Likewise, here today, we also must mention that we, as indigenous and peasant communities, as uh, livestock owners and handlers and people, fishermen, we would like our contribution to food security be recognized. So today and over time, we have shown that we have the capacity to feed the world using our own ancestral methods. A very clear example of this was how during the pandemic, allow me to say that there were no government programs that saved us. Rather, it was us. We, we, the peasant and indigenous farmers who produced food and who were able to secure ancestral medicine. This was the basis of, is the basis of food security. That's the way it is. Now, it is true that for decades, we have been facing development delays and that is where the states must redouble their efforts to combat hunger and poverty and do this jointly in alliance, in partnership with civil society and peasant and indigenous family farming organizations and others in this working in this area. Now, given this context, we demand that the governments and states come up with public policies and apply these, meet these in keeping with the commitments that they have taken on with each other. The Declaration of Peasant Rights and the Rights of Others Working in the Rural World. This has been ratified by the states at the UN Assembly of Human Rights back in 2018, as well as the ILO Convention 169 and the Universal Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. These should be the inspiration for the political foundation for public policy in order to meet the, uh, to attain the SDGs, which include eradicating poverty and eradicating hunger around the world. We have heard the remarks from several others here today, and we have a difficult time accepting the progress that has been mentioned because we still think there's more to do. The progress is something we need to see in our homes. And when we talk about family farming, we're talking about the lives and the livelihoods of our people. And we here, uh, present peasants and the women peasants who are most affected by all of this, because many are uh, facing violence, women who do not have land. So for me, it's very difficult to accept a lot of the progress. But thanks to our ancestors, our elders, we have been taught to feed ourselves, to grow our own food. And so we women are young. We're young indigenous women. And we also know how to grow our own food, to provide for others, and to have ownership of what we do. Our goal is to live in peace, to live in balance. 
we are individuals who realize that the world is for everyone, not just for a handful of individuals. So it's important to, to make this appeal. Let's all work together. Let's all put our heads together because only through our knowledge will we be able to secure peace. Will we be able to secure this equality that is so uh, sought by organizations in, 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 in places such as this, but by our people as well. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Maria Isabel, we have reached the end of the ceremony and we have a cocktail reception prepared for you as an opportunity to, to share with each other outside. But prior to that, I would like to invite our authorities present here, as well as the representatives CLOC and Via Campesina, Coprofam, the Regional Rural Dialogue Program and the Caribbean Network of Rural Women Producers. Uh, all who work in family farming from the region. They have participated in the organizing committee of this event. I would like to invite you all to come up to the stage so that we may take the official photograph of this event. So that is our invitation. <laughs> 